Welcome back. Today I'm gonna create a quick video just kind of going over the secret sauce that I bring into my uh, renders. It's super quick. It probably won't take you more than three minutes to add to your scene. So let's just go ahead and dive on in. For background, I went ahead and just brought in a simple object from Sketchfab, made my own plane, extruded it and then beveled it. Uh, the render engine that we're gonna be playing around in today is Cycles. One thing that I like to do, if especially if you don't have a strong computer, set the samples really far down low, 15, and I render around 200. And for color management, I keep it around medium high contrast. But anyways, so the first things first is you're gonna wanna bring a camera into this all, pressing Shift A. So once you bring in the camera, let's just go ahead and make sure that's in the collection. Let's drag it over here. Let's bring it over here. And then we're gonna enter it by pressing shift tilde just to get a fun angle here. Right about there I think is okay. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is vertically split my viewport. And I'm gonna go over to my lighting. And here's the first step of the secret sauce. Bring in an area light. Let's just make sure we render this so we can kind of see what's going on. And what we did is you bring up this area light. Now, if you're wondering about the background light that's already existing, this is an HDRI. Pretty much I brought it at a really low strength, not to fully illuminate the area, but to get a little bit of something. So once you bring in your area light, just open up that. I like to crank it up quite a bit, about like 300 maybe. And the secret sauce is within the spread. Put it around five you see you get this very nice beam and then what i do is i'll take the beam and then scale it on the x or y you can see if you scale on the y you get it more vertical scale it on the x it really depends on the orientation of your scene and how you want things to be set up and from there i'll bring in a nice like fun light color so this is the ps2 so let's bring it make it like that we can bring it up a little bit and then if you want it to not to be that harsh, you'd bring up the spread. So maybe 20 is not as harsh. And that's the lighting. Now, the next thing you're gonna have to really focus on here is your camera. Within your camera, the first thing I like to do is play with the focal length. So I drop it into like 120, boom. And you can see from there, we're getting a lot more. We're seeing a lot more. 120 is like my magic number. I know there's probably a, you could probably do I think 240 is the other one, or you can get in some extreme detail, but I'll just do 120 for the tutorial's sake. Let's just view camera here too. And the next thing we're gonna play around with is depth of field. So when you turn on depth of field, one thing that I like to advise to everyone is if you don't have a strong computer that's gonna be rendering out your rendered viewport instantly, I like to turn on the depth of field within my viewport shading. You can kind of see what's going on. I'll take my distance and I'll press E, which gives you my eyedropper. And then pick an object, so maybe right around here. And I'll just play with the f-stop here. And you can see what's nice is when you're using the view, this like solid mode, you get a better grasp on what you're kind of seeing. So we want we want to see more, but we don't want it to be too clean. So from there, we kind of have something, maybe I'll play with the light a little bit more, bring down the beam. And then the next step is we need to play with the compositor. So bring in your denoising data. Let's go over to compositing. I already brought in a viewer with a reroute. So let's bring in our denoise, click this. Don't worry about my preview, I had some technical difficulties, but I'm gonna go ahead and preview it by pressing F12. And just, off, just get in those kernels, you know? Get in those samples. 
to download the data to the camera. And you'll see, because our materials aren't that like uh, hot right now, it's like meh, whatever. But one thing that I like to do to avoid Photoshop sometimes is sometimes you want to add a little bit of grain to your your scene. So let's go into our texture and just create it. I like to create a little brush. Then I'll do a mix node. Bring that in. Then you go texture. Connect that to that grain. And from here, into a nice little overlay. And you can bring it down. Maybe about like that much. This one I'll bring in a little lens distortion. And it'll be so tiny. So, 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 so tiny. Nothing too crazy here. Okay, that's, that's too crazy, actually. It's even tinier. You don't want it to be too, too invasive. You could bring in some jitter here, too, if you want. But I'm going to make it fit. And from there, you pretty much have your like composition. So to quickly recap, we brought in an area light, made the beam shape down to like five. This is a cycles only thing, by the way. Within our camera, we played with the depth of field and you know used our eyedropper tool to get in there and also jumped in the focal length. Who made your compositor? Bring your denoise. Make some overlay, lens distortion. And there you go. You have a nice little render that, honestly, that was only not much. And once you add in your materials and you maybe add in some more light, you'll have a really finished piece there. But like always, thanks again.